Welcome to The Balance. It's a great day in America. Everything's fine, haven't you heard? If we just listened to Papa Joe in his rambling news conference that you saw right here yesterday, two hours, Joe Biden revealed his strategy to deal with the economic, health care, and national security crises we face. Just pretend they don't exist. That's his answer. It's no wonder that this was just the second Biden news conference in his first year in office. Apart from his usual stumbling, bumbling, and creepy whispering, it's clear that he's not going to change any of his policies to do anything about illegal immigrants pouring through our southern border, the massive spike in murders in our major cities, the massive inflation, and the record amount of COVID cases. According to Joe, he gives himself a, an A+. Plus. I think report cards will look pretty good if that's where we're at. But look, the idea that uh, Mitch has been very clear, <laughs> he's do anything to prevent Biden from being a success. Yeah, it's his fault, right? Yeah, Joe, you've been in Washington for 50 years and you don't have a single accomplishment to point to. Anything with the name Biden attached to it has been a spectacular failure. Just look at the withdrawal from Afghanistan, which he tried to defend yesterday. But Biden got a big lift from the mainstream liberal press, which is much more concerned about Russia. Russia. And Russia. 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 And Russia. The Russia. Marsha, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. The mainstream media just teed all of this up for Biden on a silver platter. They basically gave him an hour and a half, almost two hours, to puff out his chest and wag his finger at Vladimir Putin. Don't you invade Ukraine or else it gave Biden an opportunity to look tough. A little something for the Democrat politicos to point to on CNN and MSNBC. More about that in a minute. But all of this was a big distraction by the mainstream liberal media to draw attention away from the major domestic crises that we have right here at home, the things you and I and all regular Americans care about. The first question was asked, did you overpromise? Yesterday, I asked for your questions for Joe Biden, and I think you guys did a much better job than those so-called reporters. Did you overpromise? Really, guys, reporters? You guys said this, Lois Greer, Miller on Facebook asks, quote, you keep harping on vaccines, tests, but you never mention all the immigrants on the southern border coming in without testing or vaccines. Why is that? Good question. And Sue Froelich on Facebook asks, why are you giving all kinds of goodies to the illegals and ignoring the needs of our veterans, seniors, homeless, etc.? Really good questions, you guys. Keep it up. Donald Favreau on Facebook asked, why would you take, why, well, not why, would you take a lie detector test? Great question. Really? Because I don't think you would. Lynn Rivera on Facebook asked, who's running our country? Who writes your speeches you struggle through? These are all great questions. And I'm sorry they didn't get asked or answered. The best question of the day, though, came from our own James Rosen. Here it is in case you missed it. Thank you very much for this honor. James Rosen with Newsmax. I'd like to, um, I'd like to raise a delicate subject, uh, but with utmost respect for your life accomplishments and the high office you hold. A poll released this morning by Politico Morning Consult found 49% of registered voters disagreeing with the statement, Joe Biden is mentally fit. Not even a majority of Democrats who responded uh, strongly affirmed that statement. Well, I'll let you all make the judgment whether they're correct. Well, Thank so you. the question I have for you, sir, if you'd let me finish, is why do you suppose such large segments of the American electorate have come to harbor such profound concerns about your cognitive fitness? Thank you. I have no idea. <laughs> and then he ran away. Couldn't answer it. There we go. Biden just laughed and changed the subject. James Rosen did a great job of respecting the office of the presidency and asking the tough question. The truth is that Biden's own handlers know they can't overexpose him. Yesterday, Biden showed exactly why. The White House had to have Kamala Harris make the rounds on the morning shows today to try and clean up all the messes Biden made yesterday. She didn't do a very good job of it, by the way. We'll bring that to you in just a second. But meanwhile, the Democrat-run media came after us again, saying that Rosen somehow misrepresented that poll conducted by Politico and Morning Consult. 
And as you can see right here, 12 percent somewhat disagree with that comment that Joe Biden is mentally fit and 37 percent strongly disagree that he's competent. That's a plurality, folks, of the people who participated in that survey. But that didn't stop our friend Joy Reid over at MSNBC from tweeting, oh, goody, we've entered the at Newsmax clown show portion of the hashtag Biden presser. You know a thing or two about clown shows now, wouldn't you, Joy? The left wing media is calling us disrespectful and tactless for acting, asking questions. But it's exactly how CNN covered President Trump for years. Who can forget this stuff? The policy issues that you all were focusing on the last few days here at Camp David. But this morning you were tweeting about your mental state. Why did you feel the need to tweet about that this morning? Well, only because I went to uh, the best colleges of college. Uh, I went to a, uh, I had a situation where I was a very excellent student, came out, made billions and billions of dollars, became one of the top business people. The president has a very limited vocabulary. I mean, it's notable. It's, it's <laughs> pe people have, have remarked on that he does repeat the same words over and over. It's hard to know if that's a decline, a sign of decline of some kind. What do you see having um, covered him for so long? See the difference there? When Trump was asked about something that's very difficult to be asked in front of millions of people, he answered it. When Biden, I don't know, swatted it away. And we can all see just from those answers that President Trump was much sharper than Biden, right? Meanwhile, leftist Van Jones said the quiet part out loud. I think you have to be honest that you can be a, a foggy, meandering a president, say like Reagan near the end, if you're winning. But if you're foggy and meandering on key questions and you're also not winning, uh, then you've got a real problem. There it is. Van Jones, CNN. He's foggy and meandering and not winning. There you go. Even partisans like Van Jones don't think Biden's up to the task of being president. They just need him to go through the motions enough so they can get their radical agenda passed. And thankfully, that's not working out too well lately but we will see. And speaking of going through the motions, Biden just does not project strength. The Democrats want to talk about Russia. Let's compare Joe Biden with their leader, Vladimir Putin. The fact of the matter is that uh, we're in a situation where... Uh, they could have moved faster. So I... Uh, um, Well, there you go. To be clear, for any you leftists out there watching, yes, we know Putin's an awful dictator. And yes, the hockey team is clearly going to let him score goals. Got it. But Putin, also 69 years old, do you think Joe Biden can even put on a pair of ice skates? The Russians do all these PR stunts to see Putin hang gliding, riding a horse with his shirt off. Compare that to our guy, old Joe, tripping up a flight of stairs. Or how about when he forgot where to turn at the White House last summer. See, do you think Putin respects Biden? Remember, Putin invaded Crimea under Biden and Obama's watch. Finally, the one major story that came out of the presser yesterday, Joe officially made, naming Kamala Harris as his running mate in 2024. Yes and yes. She's going to be my running mate, number one. And number two, I did put her in charge. I think she's doing a good job. Yikes, yikes, yikes. I can see those that left his heads exploding right there. The question forced him to do it and say it. But you could hear Democrats and Americans across the country let out a collective groan when Biden made that statement. Republicans are licking their chops. After the last election, liberty-minded Americans are facing a difficult question. What do we do now? We do have a plan to stop them. This is the only plan that bypasses Biden and Congress to save the republic. Sign the petition at conventionofstates.com. 